Welcome back to Kaiju Rider, and for context, here's a playlist on why we bought the 2021 SV650 as my wife's first ever bike. But now that we've reached the one year service, are we still happy with our decision? But first, a quick word from our sponsors. There are no sponsors, this channel's been a money pit. And you can look in the description at the timestamps for the four parts, but without any further ado, modifications. You've seen this video about our bagster seat feels a little cheap, it's definitely still better than stock. And as you've probably seen this video about the crash bars, they also allow for us to mount these running lights. They're super bright and at this position make the bike look much bigger than it is. They're not perfect, but considering they only cost about 5,000 yen, they're pretty good. And we have these LEDs in the headlight and the blinkers that all work pretty good with an aftermarket flasher. And you can see this tail bag is so good, it's actually the tail bag from my street triple that I gave her. I bought the same exact tail bag to use on my bike when I'm doing short day trips and don't need a full size aluminum top box. And here at the handlebars you see that there's a phone mount with a phone charger. It holds the phone, it charges everything, and this one is the same that was in my previous Tracer one year review. You can turn it on to check how much charge is in your battery, and you can charge small things while the bike is off. So if you wanted to charge a set of earbuds or your cardo system real quick while you're taking a break at a road stop, it shouldn't use enough power to drain the bike's battery. It's been pretty good for us. We also have these cheap Amazon handguards, four or five years old. I don't know what they are. I just know they were $10, and we use them to keep the winter winds off of her hands. My views as a 13-year experienced rider. First and foremost, some will say that this is a 23-year-old model. That's completely true if you do no research or critical thinking. But rather than make a new bike every few years, what Suzuki's done is they made this bike in 1999 and slightly tweaked it over the years. This specific version is noticeably different than even a 5-year-old version of the bike, be it the brakes or the injection system or the fuel economy, and obviously the colors. But what this means for you, the R&D was paid off more than 10 years ago, so you get a very quality bike but at a great discount but by all means have that argument in the comments now this bike only has 3,000 kilometers on it but we've had it for one year so we've had a lot of time to get to know it and with her being a new rider 3,000 kilometers is not a small distance for a country like Japan as far as the reliability, the one issue we've had is there's been a few slight bits of rust on the frame and around the forks, but the rust was cleared and got a paint touch up under warranty from Suzuki. As for the chain, we oil it every month, we have never had to adjust it, and we've had no other issues with things like tires and brakes, and we had the oil changed originally at the first service. Now at the break-in, the bike was a bit snatchy on the throttle and could be a bit tricky to use, and the clutch was very heavy. The clutch is still slightly heavy, but much softer than original, and the bike is much smoother than it was. I would remind you that it's a V-twin, that means there's no vibration, just a slight lumpiness, much less than any other V-twin I have ever ridden. As for the fuel economy, we're now averaging 28 kilometers per liter. When comparing it to the competition, there hasn't been any huge changes to the market in the 650-ish category since we bought the bike, and I won't say much on reliability, lawyers don't seem to like that, but I have ridden the Honda CB650R and the Triumph Trident. Those are both smoother, though in my opinion the Trident felt a little bit artificially limited. As for the MT-07, the engine is marginally better and the bike feels a little bit lighter with a more wheelie prone geometry that sacrifices a little bit in the sporty riding category, but it feels significantly cheaper. The 2022 XSR 700 just finally got to Japan a month ago and it's tempting, but the brakes and suspension are likely slightly cheap feeling like on the MT-07. I cannot say for sure because Yamaha Japan is very reluctant to do test rides. As for this bike, it is a V-twin, which is a very cool thing, seeing how everything else is going the more budget approach of a parallel twin. And again, it's a very smooth V-twin. The throttle assist and quick start function, they're nice things. The downside being when I use this bike, I then switch back to my own bike that doesn't have throttle assist and I stall it one or two times at the beginning of the ride. It has one size fits all suspension, but it's a really great one size fits all. The brakes stop very good. Compared to my Tracer 900, that has a very soft initial bite, be they stronger brakes. Whereas the SV650 has a very sharp and confidence inspiring response. I much prefer the brakes on this bike. Which brings us to cornering in windy mountain roads. It definitely keeps up with my tracer and sometimes, be it the lighter size or the skinnier tires, it corners even better than the tracer in a lot of situations. Which leads me to smile 
every time I ride this bike, except one time I got caught in a terrible traffic jam and rain, and lane filtering couldn't even sort that one out. It's an incredibly sporty bike, but I can't say anything about wheelies. I'm not a wheelie person, and I'm not going to learn wheelies on my full-size tracer or someone else's bike. And allegedly, it cruises smoothly at 130 or 140 kilometers an hour on the big highway. Not that I would know that. So my personal conclusion, I like my Tracer 900 GT very much, but if the SV was to get an update to make it feel more modern, such as ride-by-wire, basic on-off traction control for a rainy day, and cruise control because I've been spoiled, and Suzuki, it's maybe a good time to get LEDs all around. If all these things had happened, I definitely would have bought this bike instead of my Tracer. But that's all I have to say about the bike. Now let's go to what my wife thinks as a new rider, since it is her bike. It's the wife. I like my bike a lot. The riding position is comfortable. The new seat is better than the stock seat, but it's getting worse over time. I like the look of the crash bars. They make me feel safe, especially after testing them. Part of the reason I wanted the brand new one is these colors. I like the trellis frame. The engine power is fine. It helped that I went to driving school first. I like the round headlight, better than crazy lights. The rust made me sad, but Suzuki had great same day service. I used to think the crutch was heavy, but now I'm fine. Taking off the seat is very difficult for me. Kairi Rider agrees. I think Ninja is cool. I also like the Rebel 1100 and DZD Automatic sounds nice. But for right now, I'm very happy with my bike. So till next time, this has been Pudding Rider. Well, the bike's back from the service, which took five days, but Suzuki gave us a fun little scooter to tool around with. And I'll have a little video on that coming soon if you're interested. As far as the service went, in total, it cost us 23,485 yen with 4,800 of that being the oil change. We didn't change the filter because we changed it on the first service and only put 2,400 kilometers on it. The mechanic agreed it's probably not worth the expense. The bike was fine all in all. New oil, clean chain, regreased the head bearings around the triple tree and removed the rust around the fork tube. Again. But this time they couldn't really get to the frame rust. It's not that much and not worth losing sleep over. Maybe I'll touch it up on my own. As for the ride home, the bike feels much more alive coming off of the loner 110cc scooter. The engine now feels smoother than before, the clutch isn't so stiff, and the throttle is less abrupt. And the mechanic kindly reminded me the bike isn't fully broken in for another 6,600 kilometers, being that it only has 3,400 kilometers right now. So it's only going to get smoother, quicker, and more efficient from here on. All in all, it'll just keep getting better. An advantage to Suzuki over Yamaha is that the mechanic warned me of the road inspection violations that will make our bike fail in two years. The fog lights, as pointed out earlier, are already not working. This custom seat does not have a seat strap, and for the road inspection you need some kind of handle for the passenger. And the brake light flasher that I've installed in both bikes will not pass road inspection. But we have two years left on both bikes and it's completely legal to keep these things and swap them out for the day of the inspection and then swap them right back the day after because uh, Japan. As far as customer service goes, I liked Yamaha a bit more. For one, Yamaha asked if I want to change my spark plugs but told me that they were only worn out 60%. I could keep using them for a good bit more. As for Suzuki, they tried to push a few extras on me, like an 8,000 yen brake fluid change on a one-year-old bike, where the manual, the manufacturer, and the brake fluid bottle all say two to three years or 20,000 kilometers. I asked the mechanic if he thought there was something wrong with the fluid in its color or the brake feel. He said no, so I declined that part of the maintenance. And I want to be clear, I'm not trying to disparage Suzuki or the mechanic that I had, but there is something about the Suzuki dealership that does make you feel like you're at a budget dealership. And, well, the mechanic was visibly uncomfortable with me because I'm... Futsu no kyakusan janai. He wasn't bad or mean, just actively uncomfortable with a customer that looks like me. With that all being said, all in all, was the service worth the price? Part of me says it's weird to pay that much for a bike with zero issues that's barely broken in. But since we got the service, our warranty is still intact for two more years and the bike is running better than ever since it came back. 
So I'd say overall, yes, it was worth doing the service. But that's it for this video. Till next time, ride safe. This has been Kaidu Rider.